hello everybody welcome back to the channel this is Michael KE4 EST and now you can see why in that channel update video I done why the disc is a mess here so you see me go through this and take this apart and do a preliminary look at it and talk about it and so now I have been going through it and I just left everything <laughs> Usually I try to tidy everything up really good, but I was like, you know, you know, I want to kind of show you didn't see me doing a lot of troubleshooting. And like magic, poof. Okay. I had to do something about that. Anyway, so you don't see me do a lot of troubleshooting. And one of the reasons you don't see me doing a lot of troubleshooting, you know, just to make it quick and not bore you to death. I've got a channel that's not really big yet. And I know there's some of you guys out there that watch it all the way through every video I put out. I can see it on the YouTube statistics. But when you got a channel that's not super large yet and where everybody just got to see your content and they want to watch every second of it no matter what, um, I don't want people coming along and going, oh, that video is an hour long or that's, uh, you know, they'll skip it. I know I do the same thing. I'll be looking through stuff and I don't really know somebody, don't know the guy, don't know the channel really well, just kind of looking for youtube for some things to watch or looking for a particular you know subject or thing whatever i've tapped in and i'm skimming through what the search results are and i'm like okay this one's way too short you know and then this one's oh that one's way too long let's just kind of get to you know so i start with the medium size one so that's the reason i don't do i want to get to that point you know and uh do that but right now i'm not in you know, I may at some point start doing like, you know, uh, one that's longer and putting it up on a extras channel or something like that for people who care about it. But anyway, so let's get back to this. Okay, so you seen what I did the last time and all that and I went through it. Checked the tubes, checked every part as I went through it. Some things, you know, of course you gotta lift them, but most of them in a case like this, you don't have to, you know, the tube circuit, I can just take the meter and stick the leads right on it. I just go through checking something and that's two different things there. Go through, check this, check this, you know, whatever, without having to lift it out of circuit. I went through and made sure that the potentiometers was clean again and all that and, the, and everything. Uh, it looked like the guy cleaned up pretty good. It was pretty smooth. And, but I wanted to go back over everything. So, and I'll mention real quick too, again, if you're messing with something like this, you're doing so at your own risk. This has got tube stuff, and it's got high voltage, and it's plugged into the AC mains. You can get yourself hurt if you ain't paying attention to what you're doing. Let's see how I want to do this. Maybe like that, just lay it like that, I guess. You can see that. Or I'll just hold it. So you can see I have, there's one of them here, and there's the other one. I've changed out two resistors in this, and I thought it might be this. And I don't have it laying handy. I still got the schematic laying here, but it's nice, you know, this being Heath kit, I found the manual online, or some made, upload it, download it, and it's got step by step, but it's got a diagram that I do have laying here but maybe I'll edit in a picture uh, and post so you can see what I'm talking about but it shows you this switch here and wherever you for there's supposed to be a wire here there's supposed to be a resistor a wire a resistor what value whatever it shows you step by step so you can go through you know if you're building it so I just started at one end I started measuring the resistance and comparing it to that chart Next resistance, compare it to the chart. Next resistance, compare it to the chart. And I hit this one right here. You probably can't see that. Maybe you can see I wrote 90 on it. What I had to do was make up my own resistors. And I'll mention too, when you're restoring something like this, if this part works, like say you're one of those guys who wants to go through and you want to replace every capacitor, every resistor, you know, even for, you know, Maybe these resistors are 
Allen Bradley style, and it's they're all most of them's pretty close. But you're like, hey, I want to just go through and replace brand new resistors, and some of the you know like disc capacitors. This year was supposed to be a disc capacitor. The guy replaced it with this one, but you want to go through and replace everything. You know, you just want to you know make sure because you're going to use it or whatever, and you want to make sure it's it's really up to snuff. The only thing I'd recommend against doing is these these are these values are chosen so that this scale here will read properly okay if you go in and start changing these around a lot and messing with them you're going to throw the scale off uh, and there, a lot of them's hard to find a lot of them you know they've picked and they've had special ordered and you know somebody setting the engineers designed this up and figured out what they wanted and then they've had a resistor company or whatever make the resistors these precision resistors to certain values because you'll get some crazy stuff like 9.1 K and 17.4 meg or whatever and some stuff you just ain't going to order you know and that it's a common resistor value so when you have you come across something like this with these resistors and like this I just it's working or it's working pretty close whatever you know especially for something like this don't touch them don't mess with them because when you mess with them you're going to start throwing it off and your meter is going to start reading wrong here so when you do have to make one though or do have one that goes bad you know you can have place you know there's places you can call an order and say hey, i want to order a special precision resistor it's one percent and here's the 17.4 meg and they can make it a one-off but it's going to be real expensive so that's when you got to get into trying to parallel some resistors or parallel series some resistors just remember that you keep your you know if you do a lot of seriesing or parallel or whatever if it's something else maybe not this that you're not messing up with your you know the wattage rating you know go get a bigger set to you know if you're parallel on two resistors you'll be fine but sometimes series and parallel them together sometimes you'll mess your wattage rating up on them you know and have one burn out or whatever but if you ain't gonna mess with them don't mess with them but anyway so this one here is supposed to be 90 ohms and when I measured it it read 7k or like 6.995 or something I mean it was like almost dead on 7k and there is a 7k in the circuit in the circuit so I thought ah oh, somebody's got something flipped around you know and they're putting it together so I took it out looked at it and you I'm sure you probably can't see that right on there that says 90 and that's what was in there but it wasn't 90 and I took it out of the circuit and uh, maybe I noticed it was reading closer to 6 meg um, or 6k what was it 6k or 6 meg let's see somebody's got one of these and they're going through it I'm going to really throw them off if I, I get that out of whack if you're just watching this video just to watch me rebuild something or fix something you don't really care if you're really if you're doing something like this you're going to be like hey man you made me put the wrong resistor value in uh Maybe a 7 meg. I see a 7 meg here. Okay. Okay, so it was... Once I took it out and had it laying, and maybe we can check it again here in a minute, it was reading like 6.2 or something that was closer. And I noticed if I would take it like this and just let it warm it up a little bit, and they measure it right away, it was reading like 5.4 or something. It was coming down in value if you let it leave it alone don't touch it it'll come creep right back up to almost 7 meg so I was like man that is just weird 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 so okay but that's probably the problem right there I didn't stop I made that well I made a note of it and then I kept going and then we got over here and I've got the value wrote on it got this one here it was this one here it's supposed to be 90k and it was like 81 point something k or whatever 
took it out just to make sure I ain't going crazy. Yep, still reading 81 or 82K or whatever. That's just too far off. So I had to make another one. And so after I did that, it started working again. So I can real quick here try to uh, make sure nothing's touching whatever. That's another reason I clean the desk up. I was like, I'll start messing with it. I don't have stuff laying everywhere. And I don't want to plug this in. And it don't look good either. You know, for somebody watching, they're like, uh, oh, you just whatever. When you're messing with something high voltage, make sure metal things and whatever is not laying around and stuff. And everything's cleared out around this. And this is clear. Everything's cleared out and everything looks good and you're ready to go. Okay. So, let's see. My very X way down. I had it doing something else with it. Let's see. Turn that on. Turn that on. Let it warm up. And head over here. Find a resistor here. Some resistors laying around. Let me get my other meter here. I guess you can see that good enough. It's kind of kind of needs to be elevated, don't it? All right, that's how close this thing is. So, on the steel, uh, you can't see. I've got it off over here. Four hundred sixty-four ohms. This is four hundred seventy ohm resistor. Are supposed to be 464, 465 ohms. This little resistor right here. Maybe I could lay it there and measure it so you can kind of see what I'm doing. All right. So 470 ohms. So let's leave it times a thousand, I think. And let's bring it down times a hundred. And whoop, let's make sure that's on the line. Short it together. Make sure we're zero. Now this, you know, it's not in the case, and it just turned it on, so it ain't perfectly warm yet. But all right, let's see what we got here. Four hundred. Maybe about four hundred sixty, according to that, but. Um, this was 465, wasn't it? So it's pretty close for, you know, something that was relatively cheap at the time and a kit. And, but you see it's working. Let's jump over here. See what this is. Let's say, hey, see what this is. This is supposed to be 90 ohms. Let's see what it is. Look at that, 5.69 meg, 5.6 meg, okay, Oop, I'm gonna do leave it there, 5.69 meg, it's supposed to be 90 ohms, let's go times a meg, that's reading 5.2 meg, so yeah, there's probably some more. Some of the resistors wasn't perfect, but those two are the ones that was way out. If I really wanted to make this perfect, perfect, um, I'd want to go through just about and rebuild every resistor in there. Uh, they starting at the bottom, work your way up, the lowest one, and see you know where you get to. But um, I'm just gonna leave that for now. I just wanted to, you know, that mainly was the problem. And um, the just so I can keep this video from getting too long. I tested the, or I figured out on the DC voltage, it was just the calibration, you know, AC and DC and whatever they was off. But I reached in there and when you grab anything like this that's plugged in like this. Be very careful. These two, there's AC balance control up in there, right there. Right there, where does he go? Well, right there it is. 
and then one of these is AC and one's DC of them two right there and that's all it was once I done that the DC works pretty good 9 volt battery it's reading 9.1 volts on the meter you know a modern meter reading 9.1 volts on this um, hooked it to a power supply and go up to 30 volts it's reading 30 volts go to 50 volts AC this reading 50 volts AC so yeah it's just you know what I thought it was on that switch so sometimes those precision resistors I've seen them you know like you know things are 60 years old and still working just fine and still the value they say if it says 9.1 megs you measure it's 9.1 megs but every once in a while you get them like this and it's just a bad run or just the way they were you know I don't know how it was assumed these are all carbon inside moisture ingression I'm gonna assume has gotten to them but anyway there's uh, the meter going that's what it was to get it going was to replace those so if you have any questions or comments or anything leave them in the comments section below and until the next video this is Michael KE4EST 73